while the prince and Kundave Devi were sitting in the Nandi Mandapam talking, while Vanati was standing by the pillar listening, an important conversation was going on with Pungazali and Santhanamudan who were waiting in the boat on the canal. Amuda. I'm going to ask you something. Will you answer truthfully? said Punghuali. Amuthan said, nothing but the truth comes out of my mouth, Punguzali. That is why I have not seen or spoken to anyone for four days. Some people don't speak the truth. That Vandiyathevan, who took a straw for the prince and went to Sri Lanka, is like that. But he was very good. He never lied to spoil anyone. He said something about you. I want to know if it's true or not. There's no reason for him to say anything about me that isn't true. But tell me what he said. He said you spoke highly of me. That's absolutely true. You told me you had a crush on me, you said you wanted to marry me. Did he really say that? Yes, Amuta. I want to express my gratitude to him. What for? I would not have opened my heart to you myself, I would not have had the courage to do so. Did he send a messenger to you for me, did he not? I have him to thank for that. So what he said was true. It's true, flower girl. No doubt about it. Why do you desire me, Amuda? Can you tell me the cause of love? I'll think about it. Is there a reason? Nobody in the world has ever found out why love happens and how it happens, you fool. Don't you lust after each other's beauty? Looking at beauty there is desire, there is also infatuation. But it cannot be called true love and it is not lasting. You said Van the Van a while ago, he befriended me as soon as he saw me. I was willing to give my life for him. Did he see my beauty, did he befriend me? But didn't your cynic speak very, very highly of my beauty? He described your beauty. But he did not desire you. He described a hundred times more about the beauty of Pavarani, but he did not love her. I know why. What is that? That's because the knight's mind has gone to the young brat who is talking to the prince. Doesn't it follow that beauty has nothing to do with love? How does that happen? Are you saying I'm prettier than the younger brother? There is no doubt about that, Pungazali. You are many times more beautiful than the old Ilya Prati, or the Kajumbalar princess who stands in the shadow of the pillar. The beauty of the Pavur Ilya Irani, who is praised by many as the incarnation of Mahini, is not equal to your beauty. Such divine beauty is my enemy. That is why I love you so fiercely in my heart. I can't even publish it. My heart is filled with panic that you, the beautiful one whom the gods of the sky and the kings of the earth can love, where are you going to come to me? Punguzali thought for a while and said, Amuda. If I tell you that I have no desire for you, what will you do? She asked. I'll be patient for a few days. I'll see if you change your mind. How will it turn out? Human mind is strange. Sometimes we do not know the innermost part of our mind. Due to external reasons, the mind is deep in confusion. When the confusion is removed, the true mind will be revealed. Well, wait and see, if I don't change my mind. I will try to get rid of the desire I have for you. Is that possible? If you try, you can, if you focus your mind on God, you can. Our ancestors controlled the mind by devotion to God. Amuda. I don't think your love for me is true love. Why do you say that? What is the sign of true love? If you had true love for me, you would feel the need to kill me when I rejected you. If you knew that I loved someone else instead of you, you would be furious and want to kill him too. Pungaza. What I said was divine, sattva-natured love. What you say is demonic-natured desire, devilish-natured. I don't know the divine, I don't know the demonic nature. Human nature knows. Love should lead to pleasure. Why endure it if it brings suffering instead? Why should we care if we love someone and he betrays us without loving us back? Is it human nature to take revenge? No, Pungazali. It is not human nature to take revenge, 
it is the nature of a monster. If our love for someone is true, then his happiness should bring us happiness. Although his rejection of us may be a little painful at first, if we tolerate it and do good in return, the pleasure we will experience later will be multiplied tenfold. What you are saying is not human nature, it is not something that can be done by humans. A doctor's son came with Van Dye the van. When he saw me, he made a wish. When he knew that it would not come true, he thought that he would stand in the way of his desire and tried to betray Van Dye the van to the men of Pallavetare. He would have tried to kill me too. Then he is not of the human race, he is of the deadly monster clan. There stands the princess of Kajumbalur. She has lost her heart to Pani's lover. If Pani's lover does not accept her, what will she do? Surely she will try to kill Pani's lover with poison. If she finds out that any other woman has captured his heart, she will try to kill her too. I never thought like that for a single day, Pungajali, Vanati, born of Satvasism, would never try to do such a thing. Perhaps, I would try to do so if it were me. I will be praying for God to forgive and save you. God forgive me. I must forgive God. God will forgive you for committing adultery. Amuda. You are Uthman, born with the qualities of my great aunt. What's that? You're saying something new all of a sudden. Our family is saying my great aunt is dead isn't it? Who are you talking about? My mother and your father's elder sister. Yes. She's not really dead. That's what I've heard from friends. She is still roaming the island of Sri Lanka like a madwoman. What can one do about a family curse? The family curse isn't the only reason why she's wandering around like a madwoman today. It's the betrayal of trust by a member of the Chola clan. What to do? In my youth, my aunt lived on an island near Sri Lanka. A Chola prince pretended to love her, and she believed him. Then he rejected her when he was crowned prince. How did you know all this, flower girl? I came to know through the sign language of my mute aunt. Let me tell you one more thing. Some time ago some of the Pandya people came here. They asked for my help to take revenge on the royal clan who betrayed my aunt. It was then that I knew the story of my aunt and my blood was boiling. I decided to join them. I came to know the mind of my great aunt. I came to know that she did not forgive her betrayer but saved his child by another wife many times. Then I gave up the idea of joining the Pandya clan. As you say, my aunt's love is divine love. But I will not be like my aunt. Then what will you do? If any prince deceives me and wrongs me, I will take revenge. I will kill him, and she who stole his heart from me. Then I will stab myself to death. Oh God! What horrible talk are you talking about? Amuda! You will not know the fury in my heart for two years. That is why you are preaching sattvic. What's got you a boil that your aunt doesn't have? That's my aunt's Samasara, this is my Samasara. Your Samasara? Is it true, flowerpot? Stop and tell me. Yes, Amuda. If we take some blood from my body and some blood from that Vanati's body and compare it, will there be any difference? There is no difference. Is she superior to me in any way? In knowledge, in beauty in strength. Not superior to you in any way. You grew up in the ocean. She grew up in a palace. You beat wild beasts with your bare hands. You run across the sea in strong winds. You save those who are floundering in the sea. The angel is afraid of the waves. She screams in terror at the house cat. She faints when she hears any bad news. In that case, what is the reason for the young bratty to think me a scumbag? What is the reason for swaying Vanati? Butterfly! You are slandering the younger bratty. Vanati is his long-time friend. The younger bratty only knows you now. Didn't he thank you enough for saving the prince from the sea and bringing him here? Yes. Who here needs the thanks of that palace maid? Let her keep it. Amuta. If you have to take the prince on a boat back to the Buddha Viharat, you alone should steer the boat. 
If I come, I will capsize the boat, even if I accidentally capsize it. You will never do that again, Flowerpot. What crime has the prince committed, that you overturn the boat he's on? Amuda. I am mad. My will is not in my mind. I will capsize the boat even if I think of this father's treachery to my aunt. You leave the boat. So be it, I will take the prince and leave. What will you do? I will go after Vanati and throw a stone at her head. Saying this, Pungazali bent down and picked up a pebble lying on the bank of the canal. Just then, a majestic king bull emerged from the dense coconut grove on the banks of the canal. Pungazali saw this and threw pebbles at her sister to show her anger. The pebble fell on Rishabharajan's skull. The bull shook its body once. The stone stared in the direction it had come from. O oh Pungujali! What is this matter? Shall we throw a stone at a cow? said Amuthan. What about throwing? You mouthless creature! Doesn't it even know how to protect itself? There was a mute girl in my clan. What to do with those who hurt her? Because she couldn't protect herself, a prince seduced her and ruined her life. What will this cow do to the injustice someone has done to your aunt? This cow is not a helpless animal. It has sharp horns. It can knock down those who come to attack it. What can a poor, deaf and speechless woman do? If a prince treats me like that, I will not let him go. I'll sell, you won't let go. You'll throw a stone at the bull. Can't you bring it from the boat in the canal and the cow will come to you and kill you? If you can't beat me, let the bull beat someone else. It's like showing your anger at anyone on this bull, isn't it? The Taurus could not understand their conversation. But, it almost did as Bunguzali said. It couldn't show its anger on Fungahalai from the boat down the canal. It bounced back. At that time Vanatha was walking alone towards the palanquin on the other side of the coconut grove. Her heart was leaping with joy. At first she became more excited when she saw Rishabharajan jumping in front of her. But she was frightened when she saw Rishabharajan coming towards her with his head bowed, his horns extended and his tail lifted. There was no choice but to run back towards the canal bank. She had come to Nandi Mandapam on the banks of the canal very recently. Then could not go up. Because, from the bank, the canal was just a deep ditch. She turned back saying that she could come to Nandi Mandapam along the shore. At that time Taurus had come to her very recently. There is no other way but to move backwards and fall into the canal. Just then, oh! Oh! Sister! Sister! She shouted. Vanatha's threatening voice fell on the ears of Pani Selvan and Kundave. Pani Selvan and Kunta looked startled in the direction of Vanatha's threatening voice. Not far from the Nandi Mandapam where they were, Vanati appeared on the high bank of the canal. Her back was to the canal. She looked like she was seeing a horrible thing in front of her. She knew in a second what had terrified her so much, M. Rishabharajan appeared in front of her with a majestic voice. If Vanati took one more step back, she would have to fall into the canal. She had no choice but to move backwards. Arulvarman knew all this when he saw it. Immediately Nandi jumped from the stairs of the hall into the canal and ran like lightning. It was perfect for Vanati to fall from the bank of the canal and Arulvarman to run down and join him. He held her with both hands, preventing her from falling headlong into the water of the canal. Knowing the danger she was facing, she crouched down for a moment and her heart fluttered. The next moment Arulma's Hivarman was holding her and she was overwhelmed with happiness. Arulverman came near Kundave, swinging his veal and sword and carrying Vanati, which lay like a twining vine in his hands, which were as strong as a vage rayuta. Sister! Take your friend here. I don't know how this girl was born in the Weeravalir clan of Kajumbalur. He said. Brother. What have you done? Can you touch an unmarried virgin like this? Said Kundave. My God. Is that a crime? You mean she should have fallen headlong into the water and drowned? Good thing. She didn't know I was holding her up. 
she fainted as she fell. Inda, hold her. Arulverman said. Vanatha smiled cheerfully. Smiling, she freed herself from his arms and jumped on the shore. You bastard! Were you in your right mind? said Kundave. Ask why she pretended to faint with her eyes closed, sister! said Pawnee Selvan. I'm not pretending, sister. When this man touched me, I shuddered. I closed my eyes in shame. How did I know that? I saw that your friend's fainting is common. From now on I will not faint and fall. Even if I fall like that, I will not fall where he is. Sister! May he never forget the help I did for him today! Vanatha said. What? What? Did she help me? Is she pretty? Arulverman said. Kunta also looked at Vanatha with a little bewilderment, What are you saying? Are you saying that I will never forget the help my brother did for you? She said. No way. Sister. I did your brother a great favor. He will be forever grateful to me for that. Should I thank her for saving her from falling into the canal? Does your friend have a mental disorder, sister? Said Pawnee Selvan. My will is right. He is the one who is confused. Let me understand, you said that he once fell into the cavalry when he was young, and a woman picked him up and saved him. Again, he fell into the sea and waddled. There, too, a runner came and saved him. It is customary for him to be saved by women like this. I helped him to get rid of that disgrace. I gave him the fame that he stopped and saved a woman who had fallen into the canal. Shouldn't he thank me for that? After saying this Vanatha smiled. Kunda also laughed hearing that. Pawnee Selvan also couldn't hold back his laughter and said Kyubir. The sound of the three of them laughing together echoed across the Nandi Mandapam and up to the crest of the sky. The sound of laughter was heard in the ears of those on the boat. Amuda! Did you hear those three madmen laughing? After saying that, Pungazalai also smiled. Amudan also laughed with her. The birds that lived in the coconut grove made a sound of clu 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 and laughed. All this time the bull, which was standing majestically on the bank of the canal, made a boast and left laughing. The ocean waves smiled majestically. The cool breeze from the sea also laughed with a soft voice. <laughs>